Inferential statistics are everywhere and have been a critical tool in science and technology, and it's all thanks to beer. Why? Stay tuned. We often get caught up in how to do a statistical test and don't think about where the idea came from. Sometimes the history is pretty darn interesting. Today's story starts in 1759 in Dublin, Ireland. A man named Arthur Guinness had decided to brew beer. He must have been extremely optimistic because he'd leased his brewery for 9,000 years. He decided that he would not advertise and never sell at a discount. Rather, he'd let the beer do the selling. Apparently, his faith in beer was warranted because his brewery became very successful over the next few decades. By 1868, they were selling 350,000 barrels per year, and that skyrocketed to over 1.1 million barrels by 1886. Guinness was a forward-thinking company. They wanted to maintain their advantage through quality control as their business scaled up. For this reason, they started hiring eggheads with backgrounds in science and math, and in 1899, they hired a guy named William Seeley Gossett, a newly minted college graduate. Gossett came up with lots of ideas about how to improve things like barley yields and design experiments and measure hops concentrations and so on, all the kinds of things you'd want to do as a, uh, a beer scientist. And you can imagine how useful statistics could be to quality control. If you have a target alcohol concentration as your beer's standard, you might be interested to see if the latest batches of barley are giving you enough sugar to stay within that standard, and if things have changed, you want to notice that as quickly as possible. Gossett was well aware of the uses of the normal distribution and probability, but there was a problem. Most methods required many samples to get anything near a normal distribution. Now, every time you take a sample off the line, you're taking materials that you can't sell. Instead of gathering dozens of data points, what if you could devise a way to test just a handful of samples and still get results? Gossett discovered a way to do exactly this by using the T distribution. If you look at the standard normal distribution used in hypothesis testing, or Z distribution, it assumes big sample sizes. Gossett asked, can this distribution be adjusted in some way to account for smaller sample sizes? If your sample size goes down, your data is less representative of your population. Because of this, you need a higher threshold in order to call a result statistically significant. So what if you took that distribution and you could just stretch it out a little bit to account for that? Smaller sample sizes need more stretching. Stretch it out just a little bit more. That's what the T distribution that Gossett discovered does. It adjusts your critical values to be higher as your sample size decreases by stretching the distribution. This way, you can use the logic of probability and normal distributions to work with extremely small sample sizes. This was a truly important world-changing discovery, and he knew he had to share it with some of his mathematician colleagues. There was a problem, though. Guinness had put the kibosh on letting their scientists publish trade secrets since they didn't want to lose their competitive edge. Now, there are some different accounts of exactly what happened here, but eventually Gossett convinced the company to let him publish his discovery, but not under his real name, and he couldn't mention Guinness or beer. But in 1908, he published his t-test under the pseudonym Student, solidifying the fame of Student's t-test forever. The t-test, in many ways, marked the birth of modern inferential statistics. The power of this tool continues to be used to this day and has inspired much research on how to adapt this kind of thinking to other types of data and special situations. Gossett stayed with the company, publishing many manuscripts under the pseudonym Student, and in September 1937 was promoted to head brewer for all of Guinness Company. The following month, he had a heart attack and shuffled off this mortal coil at 61 years old. He and his discoveries will live on forever. So that's why we have beer to thank for the t-test and the inferential statistical methods it inspired. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. Until next time, keep thinking. Hey, you know what's fun? Pushing buttons.
So why don't you push the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, help us grow our channel so we can get the word out and help as many people as possible. Thanks.